What's up everybody, back at it again with another tutorial. Hope you're all having a great day. Sorry if I'm a little snuffling in advance. My entire state's on fire and uh, it's really driving my fucking nose crazy. Anyways, let's take a look at what we got going on here. So we got three different types of buttons that uh, do various things. So this one's just a uh, simple interact. And when you interact with it, it plays an animation. And then this animation also triggers another animation. So we're playing two animations on interact here is what's going on. Works pretty well. Our next one is uh, not interact based, but collide, uh, collision based. So when something collides with this button, it could be an object like this cube, or if you have a headset on, it could be your hand if you have colliders. Uh, but this is how that works. So you touch it, animation plays, plays over there, touch it again. Ta-da, back your cube. All right, so this one was uh, probably the most rewarding to get working. Um, this one is a spring joint button. So it does not have an animator attached to this object. It is animator free. It does play the animator on the uh, second object though. So how it works, let's see if I can get in here, is uh, this cube, this time, these are all colliders. This one is a trigger. It doesn't do anything. We just need to be able to get through it. And when the bottom of this spring touches this plate right here, uh, it'll trigger an animation. So, let's see how this works. What's the difference between that and this? Well, that one is on a fixed animation loop. This one is just a spring that bounces in a fixed area. So it has a, a bound, so to speak. And you can see, we go down. Hey, get down far enough. Ears come on, hit it again, they go off. You can see, everything's working as possible. And it works a little bit better when you're not using a cube to smash things, but I guess it works. So that is how to make, well, an example of three different button types. So let's see how we made some of these. If you guys are having trouble with this tutorial, you can grab most of my assets from my Patreon. If that's something you're interested in. We have all kinds of assets on here. We got big assets, small assets, shiny assets, fluffy assets, animated assets. We got it all. For all kinds of tiers. And if this something is something you're interested in, check it out at Patreon slash VRCAkira.com. How these work in game is you basically comes with a prefab folder once you download it throw it into your project, drag and drop it onto your scene, and bam, you got a working asset. Easy as that. Okay, so first up, let's take a look at what we have going on here. So we have a cube, which is our titled our interact button, and it's just a regular cube, nothing's been done to it. Uh, we have our button object, which has an animator. This is an empty game object. And then we have our two pieces of our button. Okay, so our spring is nothing, it's just an object, it's nothing fancy. And then we have our interactable part, which has an udon behavior. So, we need to take a look at this udon behavior. I'll be scrolling in for you guys. Okay. So, what do we have going on here? We need an interact. So, we'll rebuild this as we go over here. Interact. What the? Oh, 
we can't have two interacts, but you need an interact. <laughs> here, we'll just drag this one over here for now. Okay. Need a block. Interact next to the block. We need to go into animator. So, if you ever can't find the things, make sure you're not clicked on a node. It messes it up. Uh, what did I say? Animator. Uh, we need play. So what this node does is it um, just plays an animation clip. So we can see down here if we click on our whatever we added our animator to, which was uh, our button FPX and our state machine down here. We'll worry about that in a second. Let's get the graph going. Okay, uh, animator. and a self animation so that is an object so you create plus animator and then i named mine self animation because this is the animation that plays on it this itself Boop. okay so you'll need the name of the state but before we have that we'll need uh, to set up the animation so let's go back to our scene now Make sure you have your animator selected. Uh, so it should show up down here in the state machine. If you already have your animations, you can just uh, drag and drop them in like so. But if you don't, you'll need to click animation. But if you don't have that, you'll need to go into your windows and make sure you do have that. It's right here, your animation. Uh, but you'll need to create your animations and then basically you'll have your idle which is an empty state it doesn't do anything and then we have uh, our button press which actually plays our animation and that will have a transition back to idle but nothing going to button press and the conditions will be empty so you don't need any values or anything like that. You just need two states, uh, your idle state and your animation state. Your animation state, it's played via the Udon graph. You can name that whatever you want and in my button press. And then it, when it's done playing button press, make sure you have uh, exit time. Uh, it goes back to idle, which is what we want. All right, so now we can go back to our graph. And now we have a state machine name. So we're going to say play button press. Now this right here will just play an animation on click. Nothing else you need to do, this will play an animation on click. However, if we want to play another animation, like I was doing, we were playing a button animation plus having another animation trigger, it was cat ears in this case, we are going to use this block to do this right here. So how do we do that? First of all, let's delete this. Don't need it anymore. Get our interact node back. Put it back where it belongs. Okay. So how did we make this right here? Well, we have another animator called our target animator. Make sure they're public. Drag that onto the seed. Then we go into animator, set bool, then we get boolean, decation, and then animator. Set it to string. And ours is called inflated. I know this ahead of time, so don't worry about this part right now. Okay, so how this works. Well, we have a secondary object, our devil Katie, with an animator. 
And this animator has layers. You won't really need to worry about this part. Mm -hmm. But on our layer two, we have Idle and Nico. Idle is nothing, it's blank. It just doesn't do anything. And Nico is uh, the cat ears. So we have when it is inflated is true, turn on the Nico ears. And when it's false, turn them off. And also you'll need to attach your, let's see if I can see here, your block to this uh, set bool right here. As you can see, it's done over here. We would need to do that over here. So just boop, done. We don't need that anymore. So here's finished what it would look like. Something like that. So what this says is on interact, play the first animation and also to get a second animator and play that animation. It's basically what it's saying, except for it's not like just to play it, but to uh, toggle it, basically. So that's how the interact button works. If we look at the collision button, it's gonna be the same thing, except the graph is gonna be different. And by the way, these will be local buttons. I can show, I'll show you how to make those global here in a minute. So you can keep your graph the exact same. Just copy it. The, the old one here, let's go back to the interact button. So you control A, control C, go into your new one. Control V to paste it. And then we'll delete the interact button and replace it with an event on collision enter, which is create node on collision enter event. And you attach that. And this one will work as you want it to. That one, the collision one's just as easy to set up. Super easy. So the next object we have is our spring joint. Uh, this one's a little different, so we're gonna go through it. Our spring joint uh, cube, so it's a little different than our other cubes. It has an udon behavior, a rigid body, uh, and I took the box collider off. Actually, no, it doesn't have an udon behavior. It's not even enabled, we can get rid of that. Sorry about that, there we go. Uh, it has a rigid body and a box collider. Not really sure why it has a rigid body anymore, honestly, but it's on there, so we're gonna say it needs to be. On our button, the empty game object itself gets the spring joint and a rigid body. Uh, but to put up a picture, we're gonna go through those values because they are very important. So we will want use gravity, and we're gonna constrain the all the positions we're not using. So I only want this to move on this axis, which is our, we can see the, on the top right there, under position, our Y axis is moving right here. So I want to freeze all other, uh, positions and rotations, except for my Y position. So that's how we achieved that. What we did was we took our spring joint, and connected it to our cube. So that's the connected body. We can see that, see these two, these must be very hard to see here, see if I get in. These two little brown dots are our anchors, which are configured on our spring joint. Uh, the connected anchor is auto configured connected anchor off because it wasn't working the way I needed it to for this. And then I, we see this is at 0.7. So you can see you can move the anchors. And that's the two, uh, basically the area that the object can move between. It tries to keep it at this distance. All right, so we do want to enable collision. 
because that's what uh, stops it from going through. You know, objects, you don't want to push the button too far. That's why we have our stopper right here in the middle of this object inside the cube. And we turned our spring to 100 and our dampen to 1. So we have another object down here that is outside the button object that has a rigid body and a box glider. This is also the one with the script on it. It has an Udon behavior. Let's take a look at that. Again, it's gonna be slightly different. Since we're not playing an initial animation, we can just use, again, let's take our, our last graph we made, go into it, or grab it, control A, control C, go down here to our new object with a script. So what you do is paste this in, we get rid of that, Oop. get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Then you add an on collision enter. Uh, I could only have one, but on collision enter would go to this block and it works as you'd want it to. Zoom over here so we get a better look. So on collision enter goes to a block, goes to your uh, the same animator, set bool toggle. That is how we get the spring joint button working. If we go in and test these. Uh, oh, I guess we should look at our tester object. Let's look at our tester, collision tester. So it's a cube, it has a VRC pickup and rigid body that has is gravity off and basically you just use it like this just it's floating up there you can just kind of test how things work and they always the spring joints or the hinge joints all that stuff always works slightly different uh in the play than it does in game so not always the best uh better tested in game sometimes I actually forgot how to show to make these global, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So what you'll do is, uh, you're gonna take off your interaction node for, actually we don't need to do that, let's control Z, go up here, we're gonna go to networking, send custom network event, have our interact go to that, and have a custom event down here. Event custom, not send custom. That's going to go into our block. We can name this whatever we want. Global send. Um, this one, this receives global send. It's going to send this command to all targets. So that's how you make it global. Um, for the ones that are collision, you would just change this interact to a on player collision or on collision, and it'll work the same. we can see everything's working. So if you're able to reproduce these and get them working in your game for something cool, uh, drop me a like, like, comment, subscribe. I don't know. If you're having issues with these and really want them working, I will have them on my Patreon. Uh, they'll be drag and drop and uh, probably make a little video on how to customize them or something. So, cause they're uh, like, what I animate is not gonna be what you wanna animate. So I'll figure something out for that. But uh, yeah, guys. See you next time.